Welcome to the Nonprofit Report, your weekly update on nonprofit organizations, issues, and leaders. I'm your host, Mark Oppenheim, and today we will talk about food insecurity with the executive team of the Alameda County Community Food Bank with guests Susan Bateson, Executive Director, and Allison Pratt, Chief of Partnership and Strategy. It's great to have you both here to talk about this, this really important issue. And um, you know, I was I, I was looking at some statistics in Alameda, and Alameda is kind of representative of the United States. Twenty percent, twenty percent of Alameda County residents live in hunger, um, and you are trying to fill a gap. And twenty percent is a huge portion of our population. Mm -hmm. uh, Susan, could you talk uh, ab about the the actual problem that you confront? And let's do that with reference to not only the issues that we have in the Bay Area, but also on the national front in the United States. Yes, I think we're in the midst of a crisis and Alameda County Community Food Bank and food banks across the nation are changed forever. Uh, we are extremely um, busy right now meeting community need. Our work is incredibly dynamic and changing by the minute to make sure that we're serving everybody in Alameda County and across the nation um, in a nation where no one should ever go hungry. Uh, we estimate our need has doubled in Alameda County, which is stunning. Um, we have gone uh, this month, in fact, October will be our biggest month in food distribution ever. We're likely to distribute 5 million pounds of food this month. And that is that is just record breaking, stunning. When you say We're, doubled, when you say doubled, are we talking a year over year doubling? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and our community, you know, I, the one thing I want to emphasize about our work is that we have done an incredible amount of research to find out who is food insecure in Alameda County and who was marginally food insecure before this pandemic took hold. And Allison, I'd really love it if you could speak to our research and how that has helped us in this incredible time. Yeah, certainly I can do that. Thank you, Susan. So um, about a year um, prior to this COVID crisis, we worked with the Urban Institute out of Washington, DC to do a deep dive to measure um, hunger and food insecurity in Alameda County. So as, as Susan described, there are, there are about 200,000 people in our county of 1.6 million people who are considered food insecure. This means those 200,000 people are actively reducing the amount of food that they eat, they're skipping meals, they're deploying these really uh, dire coping mechanisms. There are another 130,000 people in Alameda County who are considered marginally food secure. And, and that's a difficult term to, to wrap your head around, but what it means is that people might not be um, skipping meals yet, but they are certainly experiencing that stress and anxiety. They are, they're worried about where their next meal is coming from. Allison, uh, when, did, wh wh when were these studies executed? The, uh, they were they were executed in 2019. So this was uh, like we we um, we actually just went public with this data in December of 2019. So this so, was during a a very this was this was during one of the mo more prosperous times right in this region's history. And you have 200,000 people in these prosperous times who were already food insecure and were cutting back on their their necessary caloric intake. Right. in order to make ends meet. And then there were 130 people who were so on the cusp that they would be sometimes dipping in and then dipping out of food insecurity, right? right. Exactly. So, so that's 330,000 people. That's 20% of mm -hmm. a 1.6 million uh, population area. Right. And, and we actually believe that's a really conservative estimate. One of the reasons that we engaged the Urban Institute to do this work is because um, there are lots of uh, national surveys of hunger, right? But, um, but the, the algorithms that are developed to support those surveys, we didn't feel like those were a really good fit for Alameda County because of the extraordinary high cost of living that people face here. So, um, so you can be making upwards of 300% of you know, federal poverty level income and still not be making enough to pay your bills and put food on the table here in Alameda County. 
it's a real challenge for people. So Kenneth Kutchman uh, just asked a question: Is whether there is there a food shortage, or uh, is it is it a cost issue? I'd add in there is a logistic issue that, that food is developed here, and and can't be supplied there. Um, Susan, what how how do you see this, and, and and are we talking about a situation that is so baked in because if twenty percent are food insecure during the prosperous times, I mean that's the explanation because we have an we have a pandemic we have economic distress and all of a sudden that that curve which is high all of a sudden goes through the roof right right and i'm going to say something quite shocking i am telling you that we will know and we will respond to the effects of this pandemic for the entire decade uh, so the entire decade that we are in alameda county community food bank will try to serve people who have lost their jobs, lost hours, um, lost you know their credit, lost, lost their homes um, for a decade. And when I start to hear um, you know e economic economics experts talk about, oh, we'll be out of this in 2022, I think that's a bunch of hooey because nonprofits like ACCFB are going to be helping people well into the decade. And we know that because of the last great recession, which makes this look like a walk, you know, like that looks like a walk in the park compared to where we are right now. And to answer your question about um, what are the challenges? Yes, all three of those things you mentioned, logistics, huge challenge, supply, huge challenge. Supply um, meaning, meaning that, that um, is there enough food is there, is there actually enough food that we can get it to the right people or is, is, is it the issue of, of food is too costly uh, uh, in, in terms of Kenneth's uh, question? Yes, and food is, um, there's probably enough food made in the world <laughs> to feed every single person on this planet. How it gets to every single person on this planet is another story. And if it gets to every single person on this planet in America and particularly in California, I think we're incredibly fortunate. Much food is grown here. Food, your food banks in California um, avail themselves to fresh produce. So half of the food that Alameda County Community Food Bank distributes are fresh fruits and vegetables, many of them grown in California. Uh, so we're fortunate in that. However, all food banks, all grocery companies, think Walmart, think our local Safeways and Whole Foods, we're all shopping for the same food mm -hmm. at the same time. And right now we're noticing that um, people are starting to kind of stock up. Um, and we don't know what the holidays are going to look like. For instance, one of the challenges that we're looking at is gatherings are gonna be smaller this year. That means that more turkeys are going to be sold. That means that more, more smaller uh, gatherings are, are not going to stretch our food supply like they have when we were not in a pandemic. Um, so we're very concerned about food supply moving forward and how ACCFB and food banks across the country will get their products that they need to nourish our families. So um, there was another part of this question, which is, um, are you supplying other necessities, toilet paper, those kinds of things through the food bank, or is it just nutritional elements? At Alameda County Community Food Bank, we decided a long time ago that we would really concentrate on food um, because that's what people needed the most. Uh, and so we rely on other organizations to provide other supplies. Now, that being said, if an opportunistic load of an item like toilet paper or mixed household items would come to us, we wouldn't, we wouldn't turn that down and our agencies would be very, very happy to get that. And I should probably pause and say for a minute how ACCFB operates. Um, we are a networked organization with about 300 providers that are members of Alameda County Community Food Bank, and they provide food to our neighbors in, in every single pocket of Alameda County. So we are 300 partners strong and very reliant on our network to be that front line for us. So, so important to note. I read a very important statistic, and, and I, I want to test this with you, Allison and, and Susan. Um, and, and we have a poll going on right now, uh, which, which ties into that. So 
there was a study from the California Budget and Policy Center that working parents of a, of a family of four require an income of $92,267 uh, in order to be above the poverty line in, in Alameda County. In a, in a, it was actually focused on the city of Oakland. Mm -hmm. Now, the average income of an Oakland resident is $32,000, right? Which means that in an average household income of four, of four people, um, you have an average income of $96,000, which means that we are basically working in an, uh, at a deficit of about $16,000 just on an average basis, right? So we actually have a math problem in Oakland. In Oakland, the average person is falling short of what is required to live above the poverty line. I, if, if that's the case, if, if we have an averaging issue, is it true that the food bank system is actually becoming a middle class reliance system in order to allow people who are at the lower end of middle class and certainly people who are below this sort of middle class kind of uh, piece, that, that average piece, uh, to just survive on a day to day basis, Allison? Right. I mean, let's, let's be clear, right? It is incredibly difficult to make ends meet here in the Bay Area. It takes a, a tremendous amount of, of income to, to pay rent and to, to meet the cost of living here. Um, one of the things that we do at the food bank, in addition to distributing food, is, is we work to maximize federal nutrition programs, right? We want to make sure that everyone who is eligible for SNAP or CalFresh here in California is connected to that benefit. Same with things like school feeding programs. Uh, one of the challenges we do face though, because of that incredibly high cost of living is that there are many people who earn too much to qualify for any of those federal nutrition programs and still, again, are struggling to pay their bills and put food on the table. So that is a, a unique um, niche population that we are serving at Alameda County Community Food Bank. And, you know, it has implications for our operations in terms of how and where um, uh, we, we serve people through our food distributions, but it also has implications for the types of policy work that we do. Um, again, we are very focused on strengthening the nutrition safety net, but we're also thinking about how do we create a more inclusive economy what are those policies that we can advance that really support working families? Um, one of our big policy wins this year was expanding the California earned income tax credit to include immigrant tax filers. And that's huge. And, and that alone is going to bring resources equivalent to 2 million meals into Alameda County for working families. Um, we're also you know, concerned with things like subsidized childcare, paid family leave, all of these are things that can help um, help people get their, their economic foothold so that they are able to make ends meet here in the Bay Area. Is this becoming more than a safety net and, and becoming a, a sort of an everyday net um, in order to allow uh, us to have a society where, um, where people can actually um, work and earn enough money to feed themselves, Susan? Absolutely, and that's our goal, is we'd love to see people, a, a, a steady paycheck should be a guarantee against hunger, and it is not, um, and we, we need to change that. Another area that ACCFB is focused on is racial justice. Um, we know, we've watched this during COVID, Who, who's been hit and impacted the most by COVID? It's black indigenous people of color in our communities. And we need to, we need to pay attention and we need to start changing our society um, to, be, uh, to be more inclusive and more equitable. We need to step forward and food banks need to step up. We have the platform and this is our right and this is our message. Unless people think that this is only an issue in the, in the San Francisco Bay Area or even in urban centers, we travel around and, and collaborate with PBS stations all over the place. We were in Duluth, which is a uh, mid-sized city. 
uh, in Minnesota. We were in Bemidji, which is in the middle of a, of a rural area. Mm -hmm. We were talking about these issues and the statistics scaled to the particular regions are very, very similar, whether we're, we're in uh, Texas or in um, Washington, D.C. We have these issues over and over and over again. And we just took a poll and 92% of people um, felt that if families earning an average income were food insecure, that government does have a responsibility to implement mm -hmm. policy tax or legal fixes. So let's talk uh, about how we as Americans ought to respond because it seems to me that while nonprofits do have a role in this, you cannot create nonprofit food banks large enough to sustainably address these issues. And if we're going to have an America built on the middle class, we really do have to start thinking in, in very serious terms how we ensure that hardworking people, mm -hmm. uh, as you said, Allison, can, can earn enough to, to make a living. Um, are you uh, working on any advocacy uh, elements in order to try and put yourself, make yourself less necessary, let's, let's put it that way, to an Alameda County resident? Yeah, I really appreciate that question. And, and I think one of the things that makes Alameda County Community Food Bank unique is our belief that the most critical component to the solution um, to hunger is leveraging those public sector resources, right? And, and holding government accountable. Um, so, you know, I think we've got some of the components in, in place. It's just up to us to maximize them. A good example of that is the, the um, free and reduced price uh, breakfast and lunch in our schools. Um, when, and, and this is a great COVID example too, right? When, when uh, shelter in place orders were issued and schools were closed in March, um, school district, districts were trying desperately to figure out, uh, you know, how can we still feed kids, right? And, and, but they were operating these federal programs under all of the um, like non-pandemic non friendly rules, right? That students couldn't take the meals home, that they had to eat them in congregate settings. Um, none of these rules were, were going to, to work during a pandemic. So um, the USDA issued waivers. And essentially what we have now is the ability to feed children in schools almost universally, right? Why aren't we doing that all the time? Why aren't we leveraging our schools for universal feeding all the time. So some of it is just maximizing what we've got. Um, other policies, again, as I described, how do, we, um, how do we build a more inclusive economy? How do we build equity in our economy going forward? You know, as Susan mentioned, no one could have predicted the COVID crisis, but the fact that communities of color are in harm's way is sadly entirely predictable, right? Um, so how do we, how do we really think about how we recover as a county, as a state, and as a nation in a way that doesn't just return us to normal, right? A lot of people want to just go back to normal. Well, normal wasn't working for everyone. We need to figure out how we can do things differently to create that more inclusive economy. Things like expanding the earned income tax credit to I-10 filers. I keep coming back to it because it's such a brilliant example. Um, but, you know, these are, the th these are the issues that ACCFB is working on. It's tax policy, right? That the tax um, code is one of our strongest tools for redis redistributing resources and, 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 um, and we need to maximize that. But it's also housing, it's healthcare. We're very concerned about what's gonna happen with the Affordable Care Act. So there's all of these fronts that we need to be covering um, to make sure that, that families um, are able to get that economic foothold and be self-sufficient. It's kind of the, it's kind of the, the, the question of how do we have a healthy America where mm -hmm. when we don't necessarily have communities that can access food or access health services or access education, right? right. We as Americans um, benefit from a civil society that is strong for everyone. And we just asked a question, one of our, our attendees pointed out that the structure of the question was a little bit ambiguous because we asked how important food banks are you are to you as an America, as a resident in America. And 56% uh, of people said it was extremely helpful and 37% it was uh, somewhat helpful, seven unhelpful. Um, and, and the person pointed out that, that we weren't referencing whether you personally used a food bank. Mm. 
And we actually did that on purpose. Um, and, and the reason is, is that you can say that it's, it's very helpful without being a user. Mm -hmm. You can say that it's very helpful without even being a volunteer. When you say something is very helpful, then what you're, what you're basically saying to yourself is that it's helpful so I want to support what you're doing. And we have here a, a uh, total of, of, uh, of over 90% who believe that, it, that these, these facilities are, are helpful. And, and I think that's really important. If we can reach a consensus on what's helpful, then we can all take action and across the political spectrum, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think that this is a political issue? Well, gosh, that's a great question during election season, right? <laughs> is, it, um, is it a Republican, Democratic, conservative, liberal, progressive, libertarian? <laughs> um, Susan, what, what, what do you think? I mean, do you, do you think that it, that it makes a, a difference to the solution, what political philosophy I personally espouse uh, to, to what you do? So I think hunger is, should be and is a nonpartisan issue. I think we all should agree that no one in a country that has so much should have anyone going hungry. And that's a platform that we will always stand on. So if I was a libertarian and I felt that, that I had a particular uh, set of views on how America should function, and if my neighbor were hungry, and their children were hungry, you think the response should be the same as if I were a conservative or a liberal or a communist or whatever it is? Is that I do. what you're saying? I 100% I do. And look, um, we, are, we are in a crisis and we should not be in this crisis. Uh, Allison and I work very hard to hold government accountable, but at the same time, we're holding ourselves accountable to ensure that everybody who needs a meal can have a meal. And we believe that that is the way society should be, um, that there is enough for all, and that we really need to think about how we as Americans are, are voting, you know, if it's an issue of voting, um, but really all people who represent constituents in the United States should care about whether they are nourished enough to hold a job, to be successful, to realize their dreams, to be well, to be well. That is so important. And, and we are very concerned that people will come out of this pandemic, even if they haven't been affected by COVID, not being as well because they haven't had access to nutritious food. Now, we've been talking about values. Let's talk about logistics and operations. You have 300 partners, and those partners need to uh, have financial fuel in order to play their role, right? So how does that work? How does the, how does the money actually uh, work in terms of, of suppliers of food? So these are, are very often uh, growers, um, uh, the logistics piece, uh, your staffing. How does, how does that work? Um, uh, Susan, why don't you take a first cut? And Allison, then if you could talk about the partnerships in terms of how the financial elements uh, function, that would be great. Susan? So first off, I want to say, Mark, that it's people like you and me who give to food banks. Uh, individuals are the most generous uh, donors to Alameda County Community Food Bank. And, and we find that remarkable and, and heartwarming, frankly. Um, and generally, um, you know, the next, the next level would be foundations and corporations, and the next level would be government. Right now, we're working very closely with Alameda County government and with advocates across the nation to ensure that government is held accountable and that the government not only supplies food through TFAP, but also provides resources um, to, to food banks and other providers that are helping low-income people across the nation. Um, 
when I think of Alameda County Community Food Bank right now, I think of us as our community's grocery store. And frankly, I think of uh, food banks across the nation in this moment in time as the community's grocery store, which means that our logistics and the logistics of our partners have had to seriously be amped up. And we are um, investing more money in those 300 partners to make sure that they have the equipment, the refrigeration, uh, and other things that in staffing that they need in order to serve our community. Um, we're also going to be refreshing our own infrastructure, our own facility to, ma to make sure that we can optimize. We have a 118,000 square foot facility. So we have a large facility. We're only in one facility, which is so fortunate, um, but it, it was maxed out. <laughs> and well, so we're going to be, think of, yeah. a, think of a museum a world-class right. museum, and it's, it just has food and food operations, right? I mean, that's basically what you're talking about. Exactly. And so those are a few things that we're working on to improve our infrastructure, to improve our partners' infrastructure. And then one thing I want to add real quickly is we've also changed distributions. So we've worked with partners and we've opened contactless drive-through distributions. Uh, Allison spoke of the school partnerships. And one of the great things that we were able to do early on is as schools were handing out packaged breakfasts and lunches, they also were one wonderful in handing out bags of food that Alameda County Community Food Bank provided. So the families had more than the breakfast and lunch for the students. They had food for their family as well. So we have, we have a, uh, a last question uh, from Amanda uh, Bajarona um, Hawkins. I'm sorry if I got your name wrong. Um, but the, the question was about uh, the use of tech. You were talking, Susan, about uh, touchless deliveries um, and uh, tech, of course, drives everything. And you have a logistical issue. Uh, you have to think about expi expiration dates. You have to get that food out there. You have to get it processed. Uh, Allison, um, how much tech, how, how tech intensive is this operation? And um, are you, as, as you meet this tremendously mm -hmm. expanded need, are you more dependent on, on tech? And do you, uh, do you have needs in that area as well? Yeah, one of the amazing things that we've experienced over the last nine months are our partners, including um, tech partners, reaching out, um, you know, to offer their assistance, and that's led to some some really lovely uh, pilots that we've been able to deploy. Um, things like um, you know smart sheets to track data at those touchless drive-throughs. Um, really quickly, I'll describe one of my favorites, and that was we actually collaborated with Amazon and our public health department to provide home deliveries of food to people who were diagnosed with COVID and who were ordered to shelter in place. And um, and that that that's my one of my favorite collaborations because you know we we heard from our public health department that their contact tracers were making these phone calls to people telling people that they had that their their covid test was positive and telling them that their their quarantine started immediately and the first question that people would ask was how am i going to get food how am i going to feed my family so we were able to collaborate early on um, with amazon to make sure that those food deliveries were going out so you know now now as we're we're entering into to the ninth month here we're thinking about you know, sustainability and, and how we continue, um, you know, what are those pieces of this, this, this new um, infrastructure that we've built that we're going to continue and, and what are those things that we're going to kind of, uh, you know, blend into our, our operations as they previously existed. One of the things that I've always loved about, about our work is that I get to discover anew every single day with every single conversation how Americans are problem solvers and generosity mm -hmm. intersects with that, right? We, we just completed a poll in which we asked, you know, do you help or donate to food banks? And 71% of the uh, respondents said yes. Nice. I discovered that, you know, if it isn't food banks, it's homeless shelters. If it mm -hmm. isn't homeless shelters, it's the arts or education or the environment. People are constantly uh, trying to make the world a better place according to their own lights. And it could be a corporation, it could be an individual, it could be a foundation. 
we're all in this together. And if we're going to solve our problems and, and make America the country that it, that it ought to be, right, this more perfect union, we have to all get engaged, don't we, Susan? Yes, we do. And we all do better when we all do better, as Paul Wellstone once said. And being knowledgeable as part of that, I'd like to thank you both for participating in, in this show on hunger um, and, and uh, emphasize again, as, as you have, that this is an American issue. It's an, it's a, it's an issue for uh, increasingly for the middle class. Um, and we, we really have to start looking at these issues and figuring out together how we can solve them because if we in those solutions are stronger communities. Thank you both Susan uh, Bateson and, and Allison uh, Pratt of the uh, Alameda uh, County Community Food Bank. Thank you for attending. Stay safe, mask up. Have a great day.